my game is finally starting to look and feel like an actual game. Which is something I should be very happy about. I kinda am, but I also just now noticed that I've been working on my game for over a year. And I'm nowhere near done. So depressing. Regardless, I am going to show you some great progress on my game called Aiden Jr. For those who haven't seen the devlogs in the past or follow this channel, Aiden Jr. is about this little fella. It's a single player, story driven platformer game inspired by the uh, good old retro beat em up games from the past with a little bit of Super Smash Brothers seasoning on top of it regarding the combat. And the combat is very important, it's the central part of my gameplay loop. Because up until this devlog, I've only been working on the basics, the, the character controller, the level design, the grip map, the pathfinding, all the basics that I had to learn before, you know, even starting to think about combat. Am I happy with the gameplay loop so far? Um, no, not at all. The moment you get to prototype your own game, you just become your own worst critic. It becomes so obvious that the game is nowhere near the quality where you want it to be, but at least it's a start. I'm probably not going to upload any dev logs for the upcoming two or three weeks because everything that you're about to see now, um, it works, but I have to refactor it. I've learned so much and I feel like if I'm not going to refactor it right now, it's going to be very hard to put uh, extra functionalities on top of it. The thing that I want to solve is that uh, with the crab, I've got this behavior tree, this one. Uh, these are all the states the crab can be in. Uh, and sometimes I change the state in the behavior tree and sometimes I change the state in the code. And that's where things are getting a bit messy. I have to transfer some logic from the code towards the behavior tree so I can make it more future proof. And that's gonna be super boring, to be honest. The moment I finish this refactoring, I'm exactly at the same spot as where I am right now. Which is honestly a challenge when you have a YouTube channel because refactoring and improving code um, is super boring. It's, there's not too much to showcase the moment I'm done with that. It's probably going to look exactly the same as it looks right now. It is what it is. In the meantime, I will probably upload a few tutorials to uh, fill in the gaps. That being said, let me show you what we've got. And I can also put on the headphones because I implemented a very early audio uh, system which is super helpful. It's a global audio manager that I can reach from basically any scene or code file. And therefore I can prevent audio stacking. I can control the volume whenever there are multiple audio files playing at the same time. And with that, let's play the game. All right, let me grab his attention or grab his attention rather. <laughs> In the last video, I showed you guys how the pathfinding works. Uh, he will follow me and we'll try different routes whenever he's not able to reach me. But I think in the last video, the moment he got close, he just stopped walking. And that's where this video differs. The moment he gets close, he will attack me. Sometimes he will attack me from oh, close by and sometimes he will do a big leap, a jump, which is super cool. Also. At some point, he will just disengage, as you can see right now. He will do a few steps backwards. And this is all randomized um, with the power of the behavior tree, which really makes it a very dynamic fight. Even if I jump, it sometimes jumps towards you. If you do nothing, it will start to attack you. And as you noticed, I also added a little UI. The moment you get hit, the hearts will get depleted. And the moment the heart reaches zero, you'll die. Which is still a temporarily a placeholder animation, but you get the picture. And something that took me so much more time than I expected was the white flesh that you see when you get hit. The same goes for the enemy crab. Because I couldn't make that work with the uh, basic modulate property of a sprite 3D object. Because the modulate adds color to the sprite, it, there's always gonna be this blending effect and I wanted it to be full white. So I ended up replacing my Sprite 3D node with my own quad mesh and I had to add all sorts of code so I could animate the Sprite sheet 
So I had those uh, frame coordinations. And at that point, I had to also figure out how to go about the uh, billboarding that just works out of the box with the Sprite 3D node. But it all worked out. Now I have a nice white flash effect. And according to the internet, the quad mesh is also a little bit more lightweight than the, uh, the Sprite 3D object. So yeah, if you've got a cells of crap, it notices you, goes close by, attack. Sometimes it will disengage, go back to attack you again. Sometimes it will jump and you get this nice randomized combat experience. I also experimented with the uh, impact effects, the little explosions that appear when you hit something. Those were all randomized uh, near the hurt box of the enemy where the hitbox and hurt box collided. Uh, another thing that I added is a explosion effect whenever the uh, crab dies. It goes black, then like a few light rays appear and then it explodes. It now looks way more basic than it looked previously because I first added all sorts of glows and it looked cool, but it also looked out of place. This is a super simplistic game. So I decided to um, throw away all the glows and just implement a light source that appears on the ground very slightly. And the light rays that you see is just a PNG. Those are just hand-drawn light rays. It's just this little light ray star that I made in a sprite. And the moment an enemy dies, this sprite will just slowly but steady grow. And then the explosion appears. This way I'm faking light. Boom. Super simple, yet so effective. Pretty cool, right? Uh, but that's not all. I've got more to show. Uh, I've added some properties for each enemy that you can set that handles the staggering and knockback. In this case, if I set the light stagger to one, it will do this little imbalance stagger animation very quickly after receiving one damage point. And then there's also the stagger, the heavy stagger one. I will set it to three for this example. And that's when the character gets confused with the little stars uh, above its head. First, let me show you the light stagger. The moment the character notices you and you give him one punch, it will be unable to react for like half a second. Which makes it so that you can play with your food. Boom. Boom. Sorry, I cannot not make those sounds. When I'm editing those videos, I really hate it when I do those sounds, but I just can't help myself. I'm sorry. The damage to stagger is three. So whenever you hit an enemy with three damage points, it would go in this stagger mode. You have way more time to react. Uh, also, I'm going to be implementing a grab system. The moment characters are uh, completely confused with the stars above their heads, you are able to pick up enemies and throw them and do all sorts of cool stuff. That's something for the future. But, you know, there's a big difference between light stagger and heavy stagger. And then, last but not least, there's a knockback mode. When you set it to knockback when staggered, you only get to launch your enemies whenever they have these stars above their heads. And when you set it on always knockback, you'll be able to launch your enemy whenever you do a very strong heavy attack. All right, let me show you how that looks. All right, notice me, cool. I'm first going to perform a light attack so I can do the heavy attack safely. It's gonna be confused because it's reached the three damage. And now I can finish it off with another heavy attack. Boom. Super cool. So light stagger, heavy stagger and knockback. And what I really like about this system is how physics based it is. The moment you launch uh, the enemy, it will go into this stumble animation, like it rotates in the air. And only when it hits the floor, it will go into this uh, impact land animation. It somewhat bounces on the floor. Then it will stand up. And after that, it will either go into this confusion mode or it will start to aggro you again. So the animation is not predefined. I can probably just see, I can knock it against other objects. So the knockback animation, uh, the angle of which the enemies fly away will always be different based on the, uh, the impact direction and the velocity. Boom. <laughs> All right, I might have uh, overdone the uh, velocity a bit. Let's add a couple of extra grabs because they always come in numbers. 
I'm gonna make it so that with the smaller enemy types, it's way more of a wave-based beat-em-up. Lots of enemies at the same time. It's more about keeping them at a distance and keep yourself safe. And with the more singular, stronger uh, fighters, it becomes way more like a tactical Super Smash Brothers game. So in a way, I'm combining two types of games in one game. Notice me, ow, jeez, he immediately went for the launch attack. Oh, this is way more difficult than I thought. Ow, I nearly died. All right, that, <laughs> that looks so ugly. Let's try that again. Normally I would have just re-recorded the fight and pretended that the first fight was super epic. First time, right? Oh, I'm still getting hit way more than I want. Oh, the way I launched the other guy. I think, yeah, he's dead too. <laughs> All right, see, you get it. It's, it's, it's somewhat starting to look and feel like a game. I'm also thinking about whenever you launch an enemy, it can also stagger enemies that get hit by it. And there's gonna be all sorts of things that's gonna make the combat super fun to play. Something that I will show you in the future devlogs is the way you can grab enemies and throw them towards different enemies or pound them on the ground. So there's gonna be a shockwave on the floor. You can throw them up in the air, jump towards them and finish them off with a nice aerial combo. So yeah, it, this is nowhere near done. But while not finished at all, I do think that it shows potential already. <laughs> you know, it's a good sign when you're having fun with your own game. All right, our dude deserves some uh, good night's sleep. I hope you like this video. And now I am basically going to refactor a bunch. That's gonna take me a few weeks because I really feel like I've learned so much regarding the behavior tree. So uh, don't expect a next devlog anytime soon. Uh, I will be creating a bunch of tutorials next. So for example, if you wanna know how I implemented the pathfinding, make sure to like, subscribe, so you don't miss out the upcoming tutorial. I see you guys around in the next video. Stream, bye bye.